and Grow Bible. <laughs> Adam and Eve. In the beginning, God created a great big universe with tons of shining stars, a bright burning sun, and do you remember what else? Yep, planets. Right. Then he took a planet and filled it with so many special things. Earth, that's where we live. Right again. And on the Earth, he made two very special creatures. Oh, oh, I know. Um, a whale and a dinosaur. Nope. Those aren't the creatures I'm talking about. Keep guessing. A platypus and sloth? A dog and a cat? A lizard and a blobfish? Oh, I give up. A man and a woman. I knew it. Well, actually I didn't. But now I do. <laughs> God named the man... Adam. And the woman he named... Eve. Now, the Earth was a pretty wild place. So, God planted a garden for Adam and Eve to live in. Wow! How cool is that? God called the garden Eden. And inside the garden, Adam and Eve had everything they needed. And best of all... We are friends with God. But friendship only works if there is something very important. Trust. If Adam and Eve wanted to continue to be God's friends, they needed to trust Him. They needed to listen to God. Trusting God should be easy, since He loves us so much. And He knows everything. And it was easy. For a while. Just a while? You see, there was this one tree. I thought there were lots of trees in the garden. Oh, there were. But there was this one particular tree in the garden that was different. God said, Don't eat from that tree. So they had a gazillion trees with all the fruit they could want. And just one they couldn't touch? Yep. Just that one? Uh-huh. <laughs> Easy peasy. It should have been. And Adam and Eve were just fine doing as God had told them, up until a new voice showed up in the garden. A new voice? Who was it? It was the voice of the enemy of God. And it was coming from a sneaky, tricky snake that said, Are you sure God said you can't eat the fruit from that tree? Oh, we're, we're sure. sure. God said that if we eat that fruit, we will die. And then the snake did something that no one had ever <laughs> done before in God's beautiful world. The snake lied. <laughs> you will surely not die. Huh? huh? No. If you eat of that tree, you'll become wise and smart like God. That doesn't sound right. So for sure they stopped listening to the sneaky snake and walked away, right? <sighs> no. What? No way! They thought about what the snake said. It would be great to be as wise as God. Then we'd know everything too. Hmm. What to do? What to do? What did they do? Adam and Eve decided to trust the snake and go their own way. They did what God told them not to do. They ate the fruit. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no! At that moment, sin entered God's wonderful world. You see, sin is when we ignore God and choose our own way, just like Adam and Eve did. That's Adam and Eve, and they listen to him instead of God? This is a terrible story. Hmm. Yes, that snake was terribly <laughs> sneaky. And since Adam and Eve sinned, they had to leave the garden. But don't worry, the story's not over yet. It isn't? What happened next? God had a plan. 
He loved his creation, and he wasn't going to let some sneaky old snake spoil it. What that sneaky snake didn't know was that God was going to do something very special to save the world from sin and make things right again. I knew God wouldn't let that snake ruin everything. Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden of Eden and settle in a new place. Yes, because they sinned. They went their own way instead of God's way. Yep, and after a while they had kids. And then their kids had kids. Grandkids! And their grandkids had great-grandkids. Then the great-great-grandkids had kids. And as all those people spread around the world, Something else was spreading, too. Sin. People were choosing their own way instead of God's way. Fighting, stealing, lying and hurting each other, and making God's world a very ugly place. Until finally, God said, Enough! It's time to start over. Start over? How? God picked one person to start his world over again. Noah! Noah was a righteous man. He tried very hard to make right choices. In a world where everyone was doing their own thing, Noah was always ready to do what God asked. He had been practicing listening to God and being obedient for a long time. More than 500 years. How could anyone be that old? <laughs> People lived a long time back then. Are you all right? I was thinking about the candles on his birthday cake. Happy birthday! <laughs> I see. So God said to Noah, I want you to build a boat. What's a boat? A thing you can float in. If there's a flood. What's a flood? It's when water covers everything. It's why you need a boat. How big? Big enough for your family and some animals. Uh, how many animals? All of them. Two of every kind. <laughs> then God gave him plans for building the big boat. Noah was already so old. Building a boat that big would take a long time. Right. It took Noah and his family years and years and years. Hey, Dad, are we done yet? Not yet. Now are we done? Nope. On top of that, Noah's neighbors probably came by to laugh at him. So it's called a boat. And it's for floating on water? Yep. <laughs> There's no water anywhere. Poor Noah. He was just doing what God told him. Yes, he wanted to be God's friend even if everyone else thought he was silly. <laughs> Finally, one day, a drop fell from the sky. <laughs> hey! Then another, and another, and another. And then... The animals started to come? Yep. God sent them to Noah, and Noah packed them all into his big, big boat. Now are we done? Then God closed the door. We are. The rain continued to come down, harder and harder. Suddenly, having a boat looked like a pretty good idea. The water rose higher and higher. God covered the land with water so that all the fighting and hurting died. 
But so did most of God's creation. That's sad. It was very sad. It rained and poured for 40 days. And Noah's big, big boat floated on the water 50 days, 60 days, 100 days, 150 days. That is a long time. It was. Then, finally, the water started to go down, 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 down. Until one day, Noah's big, big boat came to rest on top of a mountain. And God said, Let's start again. So, Noah and his family, plus a bunch of seasick animals, walked out of the big, big boat into a clean, fresh world. I have placed a rainbow in the sky as my promise that I will never again flood the earth. It was time to start again. <laughs> there are stories in the Bible that are told when you're a child. But as soon as you're a grown-up, they no longer seem to show up. I guess grown-ups don't like action and they find no satisfaction in these famous children's stories. Do they think they are too boring? How about David and Goliath? There a stone took down a giant oven. Jonah fled by sail, but was followed by a veil. And Noah's up, let's not forget a flood from God is kind of an hail. And the lions did say God is sturdy, they're not in our superheroes. That's all he cut his hair, lots of dollar when the topic all the blood on the fall. Here goes Elmo, you know what I'm rest of the show. So let's go back to the basics. Wow! Oh, was that supposed to be recording? What? Moses parts the Red Sea. Red Sea. It's blue water. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back for another episode of Back to the Basics. As always, I have with me Gooba and Gutty, who are part of the TTT. That's the Time Traveling Trio. It's all so exciting. We are the first to travel back in time. This must be what Albert Einstein felt when he first introduced the theory of general relativity. <laughs> you mean Einstein. What? Well, you said Albert Einstein. It's actually Einstein. Ugh, Cuba, I think I know how to properly pronounce my childhood hero's name, Albert Einstein. Oh, well, that's not how his brother Frank pronounces it. Uh, Frank? Einstein? Frankenstein isn't Albert Einstein's brother. Albert Einstein was a real person. Dr. Frankenstein was a fictional character from a book. He wasn't real. Well, of course not. Thank you. Not until after the experiment. What? Pardon me, folks. Door was open, so I figured I'd just come on in and deliver this here package. Shook it a couple times on the way in, and I'm pretty sure it's broken. Although I did drop it, I'm almost positive it was broken before that. Think it broke when it fell off my bike. Oh no! I totally forgot about her sponsorship! Before we close down her social media accounts, Gertie got sponsored by Cat Treasures. It's a company that specializes in turning the chore of cleaning out kitty litter into a fun treasure hunt for kids. I think those were some of the prizes to hide in the litter box. That is just gross. Kind of glad I broke it now. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we have a... The name's Doofus, Doofus Rufus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Doesn't Doofus typically mean someone not very smart? Well, yes, which is why my birth name is Doofus, because my mama said, in my world, every day is opposite day, which means I am a genius. Like Albert Einstein. Is that Frank's brother? Exactly. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for the package, but you must be off. We have a show to finish. Hey, why are you wearing a life vest? This isn't a life vest. It's my P-F-D. Uh, what's a P-F-D? 
That, my friend, is called an algorithm. <coughs> Acronym. It means personal flotation device. Have you ever heard of a little lady named Katrina? How about a fine gentleman named Harvey? Do they work here? Those are the names of not one, but two hurricanes that hit the Gulf Coast. And guess where you live? In America? Which has a Gulf Coast, so... Any moment, a hurricane could hit you, bam, right out of nowhere. That's not how hurricanes work. One minute, you're just taking a stroll down a street. Then the next moment, boom, you're covered in 50 feet of water. Well, guess who's floating right to the top of the water? This guy with the PFD. Oh, Professor, I don't have a PFD. Ugh. We have plenty of warning time before a hurricane hits, so there's no need to be scared. Now, can you please leave so we can finish our show? A show? Well, what kind of show are you making? We time travel. Ah, that's quite enough, Cuba. <laughs> ah, out you go. All right, all right, I'm going fine. Don't tell me what the show's about. I've got more packages to deliver anyway. It was nice to meet you. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you, Rufus. No, no, Doofus, Rufus. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, finally. Now, there were we. Oh, Professor, do you think we're going to get caught in a hurricane? Gooba, you do not need to be afraid of a hurricane. We are told about incoming hurricanes days in advance, giving us plenty of time to prepare. Oh, I'm not afraid. It's, uh, it's Gertie. She's definitely worried. Ah, Gooba. Well, you see, God is in command of all things. Whether it is a raging hurricane or even a gentle breeze, God controls it all. Really? Of course. Did you know that there was a man that actually parted an entire sea through the power of God? What? That's incredible! His name was Moses! One of the greatest characters found in all the Bible! Gooba, I think we have just figured out who we're going to visit today! To the time machine! Checklist! Set the timer for Moses! Check! Set the time machine for a chicken! I know, Gooba, that may seem crazy, but... It is one of the many domesticated animals that was most likely brought along when Moses led God's people out of Egypt. Check. Seatbelts. Check. I guess we both need to say this now. We, we will, will not intercede, intercede with, with the, the past. past. Well, that's surprising. You didn't say anything after that. Well, it's hard to. I don't know what intercede means. Ah, uh, well, let's go. Have arrived! Ha <laughs> I'm so excited about seeing the parting of an entire body of water. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, Professor, why is everyone running around like chickens? Except, you know, all the chickens. Well, at the moment, the entire Egyptian army is behind Moses and the people of Israel. So they're scared because they're trapped between the army behind them and the Red Sea that is in front of them. But I thought you said Moses parts the Red Sea and they walk through. These people don't know that yet. It's only easy for us to know since we read the entire Bible. Well, it sounds like these people need to read the Bible more. Well, Gooba, we need to figure out where Moses is and maneuver closer to him. Let me see if I can locate... It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die here in the wilderness. Listen, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish today. For the Egyptians that you see, you shall see no more forever. Ah, 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 we are headed straight for 
There's a code! Do you see this chicken? Although odd and shed of all of its feathers, plus a mind that seems to be slipping away, it's still ready to follow God's command. This one is totally on Gertrude. Gooba, we're ready about that when we get back. We must all be more like this chicken. So gather your things and get ready to move. <laughs> to where? Back towards the army? Or hey, oh, what about into the Red Sea? <laughs> Will you please get Gertrude back in her seat? <gasps> Whew, finally, back under control. <gasps> Wait, I see Moses heading up the hill. He must be going to pray. We must go. Hurry up, Gooba. Hurry up. Oh, no, you don't, chicken. Let's get you back with the others. No! Of course this would happen. <laughs> Hello, Professor, I've got another package. Must have fallen off my bike before I delivered the last one. This one happens to be broken too. Still not my fault though. Just must be an entire batch of bad packages. Hello? Anyone there? But Einstein, we can't see anything. Oh. <laughs> Moses is probably up on the hill at this very moment, standing up after praying to God. He's lifting his staff and raising his hands towards the Red Sea with the power of God running through him. The very water listens to his command, splitting apart and creating a dry pass across the Red Sea and over to the other side. Maybe if we tip our coop over the side of the wagon, it'll break. Hold on! Ha! 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 Ah, here we go! Uh, was your goal to make things worse? No! <laughs> Professor! Goober? You guys in here? I just need a signature for this broken package. I also need a signature for that last package. Must have forgot about that. Oh, and I'll need one more signature saying that I was not the one that broke them. Be right back, the TTT. -T -T. Well, what on earth does that mean? Why <sighs> didn't I pick something larger? Like, like, like a donkey! Oh, there are no donkey coops. Instead, I chose a chicken. And now we are stuck watching pigs, pigs of all things roll around in the mud. Ah, such majestic creatures. Oh God, why does it seem I always miss? All the important moments and I am left to dream and reminisce of things now left unknowing. Am I on the right path as I fumble along? Can you give me a sign if I'm doing this wrong? Stuck in a crate with some pigs. This in a chicken, I said. Foul life streaming to kids. Another story I miss. <laughs> oh God, to you I pray. The professor, he doesn't seem okay. And I would like to say something nice to make it pain. Fumble out of my mouth Look at that baby pig He's got mud on his mouth Stuck in a gray with some boots Their cuteness I can't resist I wish I could give them a kiss But chickens do not have But wait, 
Maybe I'm right to be here now. Look at his smile over the side. Oh, hey, I think he's good. He must have seen that piggy eating his food. I must be on the right path. No words did I need to say. Even showing up for just the aftermath. Yeah, I did speak. They'd probably be wrong anyway. Shall we do it in unison? What's unison? Cause we're stuck in a grave with some pigs And we don't care what we miss We'll stay up in a dead Cause it's a part of God's plan That was a little bit too high. Whoa! We just rolled into a hallway. Maybe we're taking a bathroom break already. <sighs> Kids. We aren't going to pit stop all of these people, Gooba. What are you talking about? This isn't the hallway. It's a wall of water. We can actually see the fall of water! The mission is a success! <laughs> it is? Even if we're stuck in pig slop? I feel like I missed something. Well, our goal was to see how God is in control of all things, Gooba. In using the power of God, Moses just parted the Red Sea, and they're looking at it. Wait a second. These blue walls are the Red Sea. Where's the red? Honestly, people. We have got to get better at naming things. Let us be off! <gasps> they really are time traveling! <gasps> they must be robots from the future! Boys and girls, we made it. And so did Moses and God's people. They crossed the Red Sea on dry land, and as Pharaoh and his army tried to follow them, the path across the sea closed, helping them to escape. So, join us next time for another adventure on Back to the Basics. I think Gertie should be the one to clean off the pig slop from the time machine. She's a bird, Gooba. And a dunce bird at that. Okay, then you can. You chose chicken. What? My Gooba? I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm old. I can't hear what you're saying. Fine, I'll do it. Maybe I'll paint it blue and call it the red time machine. Sheriff's Department. Okay, listen to this. I have verified proof that our world is about to be taken over by, wait for it, robots from the future. They call themselves the TTT. I need you to send a SWAT team, the police, a firefighter, an ambulance, an airplane, a helicopter. A submarine! Is that you, doofus? Uh, no. No, no, no. It's someone else. Someone really important. I'm so important, I can't tell you my name right now. Doofus, we already said you can't call here anymore. It's also your second robot invasion call. Technically, I could still be right about that first one. It only takes one refrigerator rising up and attacking its owner before that robot revolution starts, and then you will be calling me to apologize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goodbye, doofus. No, no, wait! I, I said goodbye, doofus. Oh, well, I guess it's just up to me, then.
There are stories in the Bible that are told when you're a child, but as soon as you're a grown-up, they no longer seem to show up. I guess grown-ups don't like action, and they find no satisfaction. In these famous children's stories, do they think they are too boring? How about David and Goliath? There a stone took down a giant orphan. Jonah fled by sail, but was followed by a veil. And Noah's up, let's not forget a flood from God is kind of bad. Kale and the lions did say God is sturdy. Did not in our superheroes, as it's all he cut his hair. Lots of dollar when the topic all the blood on the fall. Here goes Elmo, Trino, and the rest of the show. So let's go back to the basics. Oh, was that supposed to be recording? What? Episode 2, Daniel and the Robotic Lion. Gooba, it's Daniel in the Lion's Den. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Basics. As always, I am Professor Zeitreis, and this is my trusted assistant, Gooba. And this is Gertrude, my trusted assistant. Ah, oh, yes, Gertrude. Sadly, the time machine can't revisit time periods we've already been to, or we might run into ourselves, creating an unknown consequence. As a result, Gertrude has become a permanent part of the team. With robotic superpowers. Well, I wanted to make sure she had a great quality of life. So, I gave her one super upgrade. Robotic braces. Who is he walking? Thereby, eliminating the one major liability that most likely drove our species to extinction. Those poor dance birds, they never know what hit them. She's the third member of the TTT, the time traveling trio. We've already got badges and a theme song. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, what's most important is that by allowing her to live in our time under close observation, her survival shouldn't disrupt the space-time continuum. So long as she keeps a low profile. <laughs> Speaking of her profile, she's now on the internet. She can be found on most social media sites under the name Gertrude 6000 BC. Hashtag new in town. Hashtag old school. Hashtag the flood life. Say cheese, Gertie. What is this, Gooba? That is not keeping a low profile. But she only has one follower, which is me. That seems pretty low. Hashtag first friend. Hashtag best friend. Gooba, a low profile is her not being on the internet at all. We can't have people noticing a new species of bird. You need to erase that at once. Uh, that's not fair at all. Hashtag not fair at all. And Gooba, for the love of schnitzel, please stop saying the word hashtag. <gasps> Hashtag okay. Now, children, for today's time-traveling adventure, I've chosen a famous children's Bible story that is so very close to my heart. We all face moments in time where what other people want us to do will not line up with what God wants us to do. In those moments, we must put our trust in God and continue to follow His path, even if we end up in a lion's den, just like Daniel. Lions Den! Hashtag what? Also, the Bible says that Daniel is visited by an angel. Can you believe it? <laughs> I would love to have a first-hand account of seeing one. On that note, to the time machine! Okay, children, we will now prepare the time machine for travel. Last trip was a disaster. So Gooba and I have implemented a checklist. That's correct. The time traveling trio checklist. Item one, set the timer for Daniel. Timer is set. Check. Item two, set the time machine for Lion. Lion is set. Check. By turning the time machine into a lion, we will be able to seamlessly blend into the din, becoming almost indistinguishable from the other lions. <laughs> In addition, starting with this trip, we will always have the time machine transform while traveling through time. We must not chance having our transformation be spotted. 
And last but not least, item number three. I will not exit the time machine, no matter what. Precisely. Check. Unless I have to. What? No. That's not part of it. Professor, shouldn't buckling up be a checklist item? Why? We are both buckled up. We surely won't forget twice. Well, Gertie isn't buckled up. Ah! Oh, no. Go? We are the time traveling trio. The Professor and Gertie and me oh. We are the time traveling trio. The Professor and Gertie and me oh. We have arrived at all blending in perfectly with our surroundings. By my calculations, we should be inside the very lines then that Daniel is thrown into when he disobeys the king. I'll be honest. I feel like you've done a pretty bad job of explaining this story to me and the children. Who is Daniel? And why is he going into a lion's den? Does he work for a zoo? Or is this some kind of a treasure hunt scenario where the lions are guarding an artifact? Well, Gooba, my hope is that we will be able to witness the story unfold, providing you and the children with all of the information we need. All we need to do is wait and watch, and hopefully see an angel. It seems my robotic lion doesn't blend in as well as I thought. It's probably because Gertie's legs are sticking up out of the back of it. Also, her legs are like 10 times the size of us inside. That's weird. But Einstein, that's because outside the time machine you grow into normal size? She must have gotten stuck during the transformation somewhere inside the time machine. I must find her at once. Gooba, you're in charge until I return. Uh, in charge of what? <sighs> this is new? Watching for Daniel! <laughs> yes, sir. Wait, what does Daniel look like? Well, I guess it's up to me then. Keep your eyes peeled, Goober. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout in the lion den. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout. We time traveled again. picture of what he might look like. He's probably got two arms, two legs, and two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and some hair, and a beard, and a shirt. This is Daniel, so he's not hard to find. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout in the lion den. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout. We time traveled again. I don't know the story. He must defeat lions, or maybe he's stronger as in a disguise, or a superhero from all of my comics who wears the one cape and is able to fly. He's on the lookout for Daniel. He's on the lookout while I look for the bird. He's on the lookout for Daniel. I need to find her. The robot looks absurd. Now I'll draw in valleys facing an army of chocolate monsters that'll throw chocolate pies, but Dan's got no problem melting them down using all this power like lasers for eyes. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout in the lion's den. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout. We time traveled again. I can't hear you, Gooba. These motors are too loud. I found Gertrude. Please let me know if something starts happening. I just said that. Professor? Daniel from Judah, I, King Darius, issued a written edict that stated that anyone who prays to any god or human during the next 30 days except to me shall be thrown into the lion's den. 
You now stand accused by my administrators and satraps of continuing to pray to your God three times a day. How do you respond to this? King Darius, I, Daniel of Judah, do not deny praying to the one and only true God. Just as I have always prayed to him three times daily, I continued to do so during the 30 days of your written edict. My king, I must inform you that this will continue, even at the threat of being thrown into the lion's den. Then I must honor the written edict and follow through with the punishment. You shall be thrown into the lion's den for one entire night. At dawn I shall return. May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Ah, oh, Professor, you may want to get up here. I can't hear you, Gooba. I've already told you that. Gertrude is incredibly stuck. I may need your help soon. Oh boy, Professor, this Daniel guy sure is in trouble. Hey, it's kind of dark in here, isn't it? Wait, who said that? Who's there? Oh, sorry. Pretend I'm not here. I just want to see how God gets you out of this mess. Those are wise words, stranger. Our God is an awesome God, and he works in mysterious ways. You know, that is so true. I once lost my hat and couldn't find it for an entire day. So what did I do? I prayed to God. Sure enough, after that prayer, I found it. It was on the top of my head the whole time. The power of prayer. The power of prayer indeed. Thank you. Gooba, I need your help now. Get down here. B but Daniel just came down here. We might miss something. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to show King Darius and his people your power and greatness. Please protect me tonight so I may leave this lion's den and speak of the one true God. Gooba, I need your help now. Get down here. Oh, all right. Gooba, finally. I think if we can unhook her braces, we can get her legs back into the time machine. But what about her braces? Won't they be stuck in this time period? No, Gooba, they are completely fused to the time machine itself and should travel back with us when we go. For now, I just want to get her down so she don't miss anything. Oh, you already have. What? Get off of me, but why did you tell me? I tried. What have I missed? Have you seen Daniel? Yep. And what about King Darius ordering Daniel to be thrown into the pit because he broke the written edict? Yep. Then Daniel was thrown down into the den. They covered it up with a hole. It got really dark. And then we talked a little bit about my hat. You what? Then all the lions started approaching him. He started praying, and a bright light started shining all around him. Ah, and since the angel appeared? Well, I don't know. I came down here. What? Gooba, why didn't you stay for the angel? You said, and I repeat, I need your help immediately, Gooba. Get down here now. Ah, Gooba, we must hurry. Gooba, we missed everything. Oh, including the angel. It's all I ever wanted to see. <sighs> Well, technically, you missed everything. I saw most of it until you made me come help you. Hashtag your fault. How long were we down there? Uh, has it been an entire night? I must pass differently inside the time machine. Daniel, son of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. 
they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Lift Daniel out of the den! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Everything worked out just the way it was supposed to. Even though we didn't see the angel, at least we saw Daniel exit the pit triumphantly. For me, that is good enough. Come, let us be off. Wait, Professor, I don't think it's over. It looks like some more people are gathering at the top of the pit. Ah, well, Gubov, for this children's finley show, it is over. We must leave at once. It seems like they're about to go in the pit. Oh, dear, it's definitely over for all of us. Setting the time and date as fast as I can. Yep, they are definitely going in. <gasps> hey, maybe it opens at the petting zoo now. Those are the administrators and satraps that accuse Daniel of the crime. Ah, uh, uh, Oh, so now it's their turn. I guess you could say that. Hey, look, the lions are waking up and they look so excited to be pet. Those people are so lucky. This is gonna be a petting zoo experience they'll never forget. Go, but we have to go. Wait, Gertie's not buckled up. There's no time. We have to go now. We are the time traveling trio. The professor and Races are back to hashtag blessed. But an exciting adventure we had today. <laughs> we visited the famous children's Bible story of Daniel and the lion's den. Also, we missed the angel. We didn't miss Daniel putting his trust in God and continuing to follow his path, even when he ended up in a lion's den. In the end, God actually rewarded Daniel's face by making him the highest administrator in all the land. All right here in the Bible. And I didn't exit the time machine. That should be a given, Gooba. But I guess I can congratulate you for that. Who knew I could talk to Daniel while inside the time machine? Wait. You were serious? This episode is in the books. Literally, the Bible. Say cheese. <laughs> Hashtag time traveling trio. Oh, Gooba, stop posting pictures of the dance bird. But she's a member of the TTT. Hashtag TTT. And stop saying hashtag. Um, Marsha, what are you doing? I'm practicing impressions. You mean you can sound like other people? Cool. Who can you do? Well, you, Coco. Really? I'd love to hear it. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Coco, a blue mug with a delightful, hilarious, quick-witted marshmallow co-host. That's pretty good. Who else can you do? I can do the announcer. Listen. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Sammy the Slingshot, to discuss the importance of accuracy. And our friend Fruitcake with a family recipe for shepherd's pie. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hello everyone, we are super excited for today's show. Sammy the Slingshot is here. Do you know who she reminds me of? David Slingshot. Like the David Slingshot? Yep, David the Shepherd who became David the King. His Slingshot. Oh, that's so old school. Not to mention Old Testament. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the next guest on the show was the rock who flew out of the Slingshot and hit Goliath? We tried to book him. He's on tour with his rock band. So he's a rock star? Get it? David was another kind of rock star. He was outsized by Goliath and faced him with nothing but a slingshot, a stone, and faith that God would win. And he did. Wow. So it didn't matter that Goliath was bigger because God was on David's side. Nothing really matters because you have God on your side. Here's a reenactment. Ha 
I wonder if slingshots ever get dizzy spinning round and round and round and round and round. Great question. Why don't we ask? <laughs> Out of time so soon? Well, Sammy, we have to swing back to you. And Fruitcake, Marcia and I were really wanting to have that shepherd's pie for dinner. Wait, what are we having for dinner now? No idea. But we'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk.